Melinda Rainwater, Training Manager for BabyLock. Congratulations on your purchase of the BabyLock Jewel Long Arm Quilting Machine. Your machine is sure to give you years of quilting enjoyment. Before setting up your BabyLock Jewel, you'll want to watch the video that comes with your frame to complete the setup. For this video, you'll also need a permanent marker, tape measure, level, and flathead flower pins. We've set up our Grace Pinnacle frame to accommodate a crib size quilt. The same process that we're going to show you to set up the machine for quilting and loading quilts will apply regardless of the size you set your frame. This is a great time to check the levelness of your frame. Chances are you won't be moving it once you get it set up. If any adjustments need to be made, simply rotate the adjusting screw at the bottom of the legs. Your machine gets shipped in three boxes. In the box with the machine, you'll also find the machine carriage, user's manual, five bobbins, two packages of needles sizes 16 and 18, bobbin case, thread mast, oiler, and the power cord. You'll also have a hex wrench, laser stylus and clamp, laser stylus post, and this instructional DVD. The second box contains the handles for the front and the rear of the machine. The third box contains the variable speed bobbin winder. The BabyLock Jewel comes with its own carriage in the box with the machine, so there's no need to use the carriage or bottom plate assembly pieces that came shipped with your Grace Pinnacle frame. Place the carriage on the table rails, making sure that the front stitch regulator assembly is toward the front of the table and the front of the machine. Before we can place the machine on the carriage, we have to remove the take-up rail. To remove it, squeeze the ratchet that keeps it together and lift the rail up and out of its position. Place the machine on the frame by rolling it onto the carriage. Now we're going to reinstall the take-up rail by placing the rail through the throat of the machine and back into the take-up rail mounts. After the machine's in place, we can begin setting it up. The two ends of the connector should already be in their appropriate places. The only one left will be placed into the carriage that you just placed the machine on. Now we're going to mount the handles. We'll start with the front handles, the ones closest to the needle. Using the hex wrench and the two longest bolts, screw the bolts in until they are secure. Once the bolts are secure, plug the ribbon connector into the serial port onto the back of the machine, which is the end with the hand wheel. Now we're going to install the rear handles. Using the bolts, secure the handles by hand, tightening them until they stop. Make sure that the ribbon cable doesn't get pinched under the handle as you are tightening. After you've tightened the bolts, plug the ribbon connector into the serial port under the rear handle. Next, we're going to install the thread mast. Find the threaded hole on the top of the machine located in the rear by the hand wheel. Remove the nut and washer that are threaded on the thread mast. Place the washer under the nut and onto the machine. Tighten the mask clockwise until it is secure. Make sure that the thread eyelets are centered over the spool pins below for smooth thread delivery. Plug the power cord that came with the jewel into the machine. Now we're ready for threading. We'll do this before we put our fabric on the frame so that it's easy to see what we're doing. In the future, we recommend that you thread your machine after you've loaded your fabric. First, we're going to drape the thread up over the top mast. From there, we will bring it through the first guide and then you will thread the machine through each of the three holes in the hole guide from right to left. In most instances, you will use all three holes in the guide. In the instance of very fine threads and especially metallic thread, you will only thread through one or two holes. Unlike a traditional sewing machine, there's no presser foot lifter that will release tension on your top thread. It's important to note here that you must firmly pull the thread into the tension discs in order to get proper tension on the thread. Don't forget the final thread guide above the needle. The jewel uses a round shank needle. There is no flat side. Pay close attention to the position of the scarf, the indented lower part of the needle. It will always face towards the back of the machine. There's a groove down the front of the needle. You may then thread the needle from front to back and let your thread drop from there. 
Your Baby Lock Jewel can use pre-wound M-Class bobbins or you can wind your own. For optimal fabric matching, use the bobbin winder. You'll want to take advantage of slowing the speed down on your bobbin winder when you use metallic or delicate threads. Once you have your bobbin in the case, you can check to make sure that the bobbin tension is correct. Hold the bobbin case in the palm of your hand with the open end facing up. Wrap the thread around your index finger of the opposite hand and wiggle your finger back and forth. Your case should lift up on its side, but not lift out of your hand. If it will not lift out of your hand, it's too loose, and if it lifts out of your hand, it's too tight. You can adjust the tension of your bobbin by slightly turning the larger of the two screws on the case. The bobbin tension should always be adjusted before attempting to adjust the top thread tension. Your instruction manual has additional instructions that can help you. When you place your bobbin case into the machine, do not lift the lever on the case. Simply push the bobbin case forward into the bobbin case assembly until it clicks in place. Now that our frame and machine are assembled, we're ready to load our fabric. There are several ways to load fabric onto the frame. I prefer the simplicity of using the Grace Start Right Cloth Leader Set that can be attached with Velcro. Just follow the instructions in the package to use the leaders. As you can see, we've already placed our Velcro on each of our rails. Before you begin placing your leaders on the rail, find the center of each of your rails and mark it with a permanent marker. 